I just recovered from a terrible hardship. I left my Vita on an airplane. Super dumb. Don't weep for me, though. After much searching, I bought another Vita, just before a healthy heaping of fantastic games are set to hit the digital store. Here's a sneak peek at six games that I just played and that you need to know about. You may still be scarred by the troubling launch of the Vita. Games tried to use all of the system's functionality, and we end up with soulless gimmicks like Little Deviants. Bad times. But there is a silver lining to those failed experiments. Behold more Saki Baby, an endearing puzzler that couldn't exist without the Vita's many control inputs. Guide Baby by holding her hand through the hellish landscape, and manipulate wind, rain, demonic screamers, and other oddities to guide her to the promised land. Who would envision the likes of Morisaki Baby and Tearaway when we are struggling with Sumioni Demon Arts? Nothing is quite as humbling as the Devious Puzzler. You're suave and confident, strutting through brainy barriers without any hiccups to your giddy-up, and then you're stumped. I love that feeling, and when I finally overcome that challenge, that's one of my favorite parts of gaming. Metrico is all about that empowerment. The setup is so strange it sounds like a joke. You must master infographics. But you'll stop laughing soon enough. Your movement controls the environment, and the rules are never explained. So you've got to figure out a solution using your own gray matter. Good luck! You've got six hours to live and you're hallucinating like a madman. Intrigued? One-way trip is as bizarre as a talking rooster and twice as eggy. So where do your priorities lie? Are you concerned with finding a cure so your arms don't turn into dolphins? Building friendships with a strange populace? Or questioning how Wishberry Knife Princess could have such a keen fashion sense? It's a narrative trip that branches wildly based on your decisions. I honestly have no clue what to expect from the final release. What I've played is almost aggressively weird, though it at least caught my attention. What is the legacy of a rogue? That's for you to decide. My legacy is one of flatulence and abnormal size. Whether that means gigantism or shrinkosity, I'm not telling. Do you remember Spelunky? Dying repeatedly in the caves? Cursing those unnerving bats? It was hard, and there's nothing you could do but practice. Rogue Legacy is exactly the same, but, uh, well, the opposite. Here you die, you fail, you get embarrassed, and then you grow. You pass your skills on to your kin, so when you come up short, your heir can thrive. It's an excellent concept that's more accessible to those who fear pain, yet still full of the devious traps you would expect from a dirty road. There was a Disney documentary back in 1958 that popularized a lie many still believe. In white wilderness, untold numbers of lemmings walk to their own death. Note, lemmings are not actually suicidal. But it spawned a great game, so where's the harm? Now we're seeing that death wish infect other animals. In Super Exploding Zoo, you round up animals to win a war against egg-sucking monsters. And you do that by blowing them to pieces. Weird? You betcha! And I was digging the puzzle solving as I got deeper into the demo. Certainly one to watch, just don't buy the propaganda. We all know that Spelunky is the king of the roguelikes. Heck, I've mentioned it twice in this video, and it's been out for ages. But number two on that formidable list? The Binding of Isaac. This is one evil game. Have you ever wanted to explore the uterus of hell while vanquishing monsters with your tears? It's like a biography of some warped person's life. There's an all new art style and soundtrack from the PC release that's just as good as the previous stuff, which is damn good. The downside? They're slow down, at least in the build I played. I'm crossing my fingers it's cleaned up before release because I really want to wear mama's underwear while I commute to work. The next time someone says there aren't any games on the Vita, just point them to this video. Or, you know, the hundreds of games already on the system. Either way, 